Hi, my name is Dr. Jessica Clemens. I'm a board certified psychiatrist. You can call me Dr. Jess and welcome to my channel, Ask Dr. Jess TV. Now, today's video is part two of my reflection on one year in the pandemic. I'll also give tips, but it's through my lens as a psychiatrist. So if you've seen part one, thank you for checking it out and for coming back to see part two. If you haven't, you can watch this and then head back over to part one. Jumping right in, one of the biggest things that did change for me was obviously working from home. You know, psychiatrists primarily, we, we do our work in a hospital setting, emergency room setting, in our offices. Occasionally you would have psychiatrists who offer treatment through telemedicine, right? When they're using this sort of virtual world we're living in as a means to care for patients. And that really wasn't um, an area that I imagined myself working in. I really love to be able to be in the same space with people that I'm caring for, you know, for a number of reasons. I'm able to observe certain things that I can't really get through a screen. I'm also able to experience and feel the emotion in the room that's called countertransference that I would get, especially when doing therapy. So I never thought in a million years that this would be um, at all how I would practice. But for me, it has ultimately really opened up a new sort of awareness for me. And that awareness is around getting to really peek into people's homes. And so that has been something that um, I think has come out of this a bit more positive for me. Also, people really do keep visits a bit better. Um, you know, I work for a, a clinic supporting an underserved community. And that was something that we, we all talked about that the, the no-show rate, which is the term we use for if a person you know, doesn't keep their visit, um, those rates are much lower. So I also think people on the receiving end of care do find that this type of treatment is helpful because they don't have to you know, pull everything together if they're experiencing severe depression and get out of bed and make it to the office on time for a visit. It really helps me to see, again, where people really are, meeting them where they are, but also it helps people to keep those visits and so they're able to adhere a lot better. And, and again, this is something I never thought I would do, but it turns out to, have, to really be something very helpful. The last thing that I do um, really like and I think also have been more open to around this virtual telemedicine uh, form of treatment is it also opens up access. So again, if someone is living in a part of the country where they don't have access to a, a, a lot of psychiatrists, that was primarily who would use telemedicine before. But again, very few providers offered that. But now with this world we're in, a lot of providers, most I would argue, have shifted to some form of, uh, of, of telemedicine. So the access is really open. So someone who's living you know, in another area uh, would be able to see a doctor in another state, for example. And that was, again, under some of the emergency uh, care guidelines that were um, put forward in the, the initial days of our, our pandemic. And, you know, depending on when you watch this video, as of now, it still is the case. So people can move across state lines and not have those same barriers to care. My hope is that this would be something that continues, that there is more accessibility and a greater awareness around where a, a physician can treat in, in, in that sort of piece, but that's a whole other video. So again, for me, one of the biggest pieces that I, I reflect on this year is shifting from working in one of those settings I shared before to working virtually and from home. My second reflection as a psychiatrist, again, thinking about one year of life in the pandemic, is really about how much greater awareness there has been around the importance of taking care of our mental health, of treating mental illness, and really understanding that in times of crisis and stress, these are the times when people develop symptoms. I mean, there have been so many surveys that have been put out by national agencies that saw in the earlier days of the pandemic, many people were struggling with severe symptoms, with substance use in ways that really reflect how important it is to prioritize our mental health. So again, I think it is important that when we are out of this time that we remember the significance that this had on our mental health, but also the attention we gave it so that hopefully we also continue to make sure that mental health treatment access to care it's very much on our minds when these days are long behind us that we do remember the importance of taking care of our mental health 
Now my third reflection is a bit about some of the, the transition and the amount of work and type of work that I have done over the last year, particularly as it relates to my public facing work. So the work I do as Dr. Jess. I have been so busy. I mean, I would have imagined that, again, in this sort of virtual context, that opportunities to contribute to conversations about mental health, raise awareness, any of that work that I would do previously in person, like flying here and there to speak, I thought those opportunities would, would, would sort of, you know, dwindle. But I, what I found, and I think the overall theme from, from this video that I want you all to take away is that awareness and importance of mental health were way up. I mean, I have been incredibly busy during this time. The theme, I think for me, when I just take a global sort of just appraisal of the year, uh, is that people have been under a lot of stress. People have really been suffering when we think about developing depression and anxiety. It, it comes up often in, in, in the visits um, I have with, with, with people in the office. It comes up on social media. I'm getting, I'm getting emails about it. So this has been a very hard time. Um, what I also have seen is, is this is also a time when people are coming together. Uh, people are getting creative in how they engage. Um, again, as I shared all of these sort of opportunities I've been asked to be a part of virtually um, indicates that, but people are really using this time, I think, to, to, to find ways to stay together. I've also found that people are, are using this time to shift gears a bit. I mean, if you have to, or if you've, if you've lost work and now you're, 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 you're really forced to, to, to come up with something else, this has been a time where, when some people have taken a step or a leap of faith into something that they, they would like to do. Now that's a bit of a silver lining because again, a lot of people are really struggling and don't necessarily have the opportunities or the ideas or just the ability to be able to pivot into a different world um, in terms of the type of work they do. Um, so I don't wanna to leave people um, who are experiencing that out. But I think globally, people are, are finding ways to, to pivot, to come together. Um, and as we all really carry a lot with us uh, emotionally over this last year, people have lost loved ones, they're, they're, they're grieving, they're, they're looking for ways to healthily grieve, again, to find community. So the, the theme this year really has been mental health and, and it's, and it's, unfortunate that it took a pandemic for for this to to become a important part of everyone's conversations and it's on everyone's mind but i think it, again it really speaks to the depth and the difficulty that this time has really been for for everyone and so i want to give you guys a few tips uh, as we move forward for uh, another calendar year um, the first tip I have is if you can take the vaccine, if your name or opportunity or your demographic comes up on that list, take the vaccine. It's going to be important to keep you safe, to help others, you know, and to contribute to what we're all trying to do, which is, is get out of this pandemic. So that's tip number one. Number two, I think it's gonna be so important to manage stress. Look, everyone's not gonna be able to see a therapist or psychiatrist, you know, look for resources if you really feel like you need to, or even if you have a question, look for resources in your local community and also in the description, I have some, some tips on how you can, can get help. Um, but de-stress, reducing stress, that is gonna be very important, I think, as we, again, prepare ourselves for a bit of a rocky year perhaps i mean i'm hopeful but um as we prepare ourselves for we're still working to get through this so you're going to want to do things like make sure you're getting adequate rest you're eating a balanced diet you're taking nature walks you're you know turning the television off you're staying connected with people you're going to really want to prioritize that the reason for that is stress can contribute to exacerbating underlying mental health conditions. So it's a mouthful to say, if you're stressed, that's sometimes when you develop or signs of depression, anxiety, you know, those um, symptoms can come forward. So tip number two, de-stress. 
My last tip that I would give to people is take it a day at a time. I think this is something I, I, I shared um, in my personal reflection, but it is something that I, I truly believe as a psychiatrist as well, is the importance of just one day at a time, do your best to get through the day, do what you need to to get through the day. Um, and, and I think from there, when you look back, you'll see how much you have accomplished and how far you've gone. So, so try to keep things in perspective and to, to, again, take it one day at a time. And so that was my reflection and tips as a psychiatrist as I really just take a moment and, and think about we've spent one year in the pandemic. So I really wanna hear from you. Use the comments. You can reflect on your own experience in the pandemic. Drop some gems for us. Look, it's a village. We all can learn from one another. I'm not here to always just give the tips. I appreciate them as well. If you also like this video, share it with others. Invite them to join this community. If you haven't subscribed, remember to subscribe. And as always, until next week, remember no matter what, you are not your pain, you are love. Be well.